Hi, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Hanging out today with Candice Cardi Williams. Hello. What's going on? How are hey, you? Hey, good, thank you. How are you doing? Congratulations on the book. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. What's this journey been like? How was it putting this whole thing together? Walk me through the whole thing. Oh, the journey has been, it's been quite something. Um, but, and one that I'm still like processing and catching up with. Um, someone said to me, it might take you another six months. Because it's been six months and it's like been this sort of whirlwind of like, you know, like I remember my um, agent said to me, your book probably won't be published anywhere but in England because hmm. it's such a London story. Sure. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Thank you. I'm just grateful <laughs> for anything. And then it turned into this like kind of like small sensation here, which is really nice. Um, but in terms of the process, it has been like just like so much hard work and writing and locking myself away. And then like a like a couple of years of like my publishing houses being like okay we're gonna like roll it out slowly and like get like buzz going and then as soon as it came out it was like oh there's buzz so that was really nice so what do you think the biggest reasons were for the buzz not only in london but here in america people are digging it as well what do you think are the biggest reasons do you know what? i think it's i think it's that it's such a personal story but one that is universal as well because whoever you are you are touching on some of the themes in the book in your own life so is that like mental health is that identity is it like bad dates like mm -hmm. we kind of all know that stuff and so I think for most people it's really hard to pick it up and not find themselves in it in some way yeah and just yeah. to have a new storyteller out yeah. there you know because like you've been around publishing for a long time yeah. you saw very similar authors, I'm sure. So yeah. what were some of the challenges in just making sure that your story did cut through amidst all of the great novels out there and amidst also like a bunch of junk out there too when it comes to books? That is true. <laughs> oh, that's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's all like right. there's a lot of crap where you're just like, okay, it's another self-help book or okay, we've this heard this true. story, but it's like this is a story that people should be checking out. This is true. I think it was, the, I think the positioning was quite good. I think there was this interesting thing where people were saying it was a black Bridget Jones. Mm. And then lots of people pushed against that. So there was like noise on both sides from people who were like, okay, that's nice. And people who were like, no. And so there's like two camps who were like making it like more of a thing because they're like arguing about what it is, <laughs> which is really great. <laughs> which I'm sure you never imagined, right? That people no. are like going back and forth, trying to put you in one box, put you in the other. Like that's, that must have been wild for you. It's totally wild. And like loads of the pieces, I remember someone wrote a Time magazine piece about how it was not like Black Bridget Jones. Mm. And I was like, whoa, like this is actually <laughs> like a thing. And I felt really like, weird weirdly guilty and being like you know but it's been like a it's been like a nice thing and there's been like mad support and mad buzz that I'm still trying to like like my Instagram DMs are like a crazy <laughs> place but like in such a nice way and I I, keep, I don't know how to respond to everyone so I just <laughs> panic and I just close sure. it <laughs> yeah and I feel really guilty mm. but someone told me I should just like like it and like double yeah, tap you just it. double tap just it. acknowledge that I've seen it and I was like but I feel like I should say like thank you and like how are you and like what are I you know. up to and they were like no you just can't engage with all those different people no, it would just take like too much to. time but the fact that your book is hitting all these different people that just goes to show that yeah. these are things we need to talk about identity yeah. mental health so what, what did you learn about yourself and all this what was it like unpacking different parts of your life here wow uh it was like well you know it's not it's not um autobiographical mm -hmm. it's kind of like themes that i've borrowed from like my life my friend's life my family's lives but just like themes that are important and so when i was setting out to write this i was like okay this is going to be the year in the life of this black girl and there are so many things you know and understand and have lived about this so what are you going to put in and so the things that I guess what I've what I've learned is that I have absorbed more than I realized mm. and like getting this out was like catharsis because I was carrying like not just my stuff but like stuff from like my nan and like her generation and my mum and that generation like all of my friends um, and so it was really nice to kind of like release it yeah I'm sure it's therapeutic in a way very much yeah. so because yeah I mean so and then now I'm sort of paying for it and like <laughs> gonna have to go to therapy myself <laughs> to deal with everything but it's so okay. the book actually wasn't enough there's a lot more we gotta hit on yeah <laughs> which is like you know just like the chain your life like does a, a weird flip and like you get recognized and people are like hi like and why did you write this and like hey I want to talk to you about like you know just like in the street like I want to talk to you about why Queenie doesn't have like loads of like black boyfriends and it's like mm. I've got a meeting, I just really <laughs> need to run. But like, I don't have know, a half an hour to explain no, this whole I thing. I wish I did. So, you know, so there's lots of that. So yeah, I think like therapy is, is where I'm going next. On the rise. Yeah. <laughs> so when you mentioned London, obviously it's a really big part of the book and your culture. How does that impact everything? Like what have been the responses in London compared to here in America? Well, I mean, I've heard like kind of, I mean, people in, in London are like, yeah, OK, so we see this is the London that we see and that we know. So that's great. Um, and then we have people here who were like, it's great to know more about this place that like I really love to go to. Um, 
but like just flat rate it's just been people who I remember like the book came out here first mm -hmm. And people were like, okay, this is a really good representation of London because like, maybe I've been here. Um, but lots of people were like, I think you've stolen my diary. Hmm. And so like, even though it is such a London story, somehow, as I said, like all of the themes of it like transcend that place. Yeah. Um, but it is like very firmly rooted in South London. Because so much of it is what people are dealing with all over the world, right? Like y you've talked about this, even Queenie, like why isn't she dating more black men? Yeah. You know, like we're not asking this about white women, right? Or like you've written about it in the past, like, oh, you're beautiful for a black woman, yeah. you know? And that must be such a frustrating thing, but do you sense change happening? Like, do you sense the culture kind of shifting, or is it still more of the same that you've dealt with? I think it's interesting. I think that conversations are happening now around this stuff. I don't think that we had the language for all of this mm -hmm. stuff a few years ago, because I certainly didn't, and like, I think if I'd had, so I wrote Queenie when I was 25, 26, mm -hmm. so that was four years ago, so I'm 30 now. And I think that if I'd written it now, it might be a very different thing sure. because we are having these conversations and we are learning more things about ourselves and how we deal with things. I think approaches to dating are very different. I think people are calling out stuff as they see it. So like social media is an amazing place. Totally. Um, and it just wasn't that place when I was writing. And so it's been a really interesting thing to see how much people are talking now about the things that we couldn't have done before. Um, and so, yeah. What do you think are the biggest differences in dating culture four or five years later? I think that people, I think that like women especially, the ones that I talk to, we don't go into it as blindly anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're not naive to the fact that some people want X or Y. Um, and I think that we can, I think we feel the confidence to be more open and be like, this is what I would like, like what are you doing? Like this is gaslighting, mm -hmm. you know, for example, like there are loads of terms that we didn't have totally. before. So like gaslighting is a huge thing. Yeah. That is like, we're understanding now that that is, that's, that that's manipulation. Like there are loads of things that, are, that we face that we didn't know were happening. And so I think that's the bigger thing. I think we're just kind of clued up now. And I think that's not just like my generation of like 30 year olds, it's also the generation coming up behind us. Totally. I think they're the ones who are like actually doing all that work and we're like, Okay, that's really great. That's yeah. Okay, I see that too. Yeah, that's you're really doing it. We don't even have to talk yeah, about it because you already do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's really interesting. And even the men in the book here, like, they don't have full names because they're just kind of inconsequential. That's it. Thank you for realizing yeah. that. Some people don't. They all have three letter names. Right. That must have been pretty interesting to yeah. work that out. So when did you decide that was going to be a thing? I like from the beginning. You just knew right yeah, off the bat. Yeah, I was like, they're not going to have identities because it really isn't. Because as much as it is about them and it is about Queenie finding her value first through her ex-boyfriend then through like a bunch of unnamed men it was about her and mm -hmm. it was about her value and it really wasn't about all these men um, and I didn't want to send to them because it really isn't about them it is about this girl trying to figure her shit out yeah. can I swear yeah you just did I just did <laughs> yes <laughs> so regardless of who reads this book what do you want people to learn maybe about themselves what do you want them to kind of dive in a little deeper on I think the understanding that we are not perfect people and that we never will be and even if we won't have a phase that is as queen as a phase that isn't as reckless as Queenie's we will still go through stuff and it's okay to do that you know I think that you know I spent so much of my life trying to be perfect and trying to be strong and trying to hold it together and my friends would be like are you sure you're okay and I'd be like yeah no, no everything's fine and it so wasn't yeah um, and so yeah I just want people to be able to be like no I'm I'm doing really badly at the moment it doesn't mean anything, but I'm going to get through this. Yeah, just um, be vulnerable with people. Being vulnerable and being open. Also, being vulnerable with yourself. And mm -hmm. I think like having to, this armor doesn't suit. It doesn't suit or serve anyone, you know. No, definitely not. And just having the awareness that it's okay to not be okay, exactly. and to do something about it, and not just continue in the same path. But it's like let's have this conversation because like exactly. when you're 25, 26, these aren't things that you're just bringing up with your friends in everyday conversation. But now it's like, hey, how are you actually doing? You it's know? wild, There's isn't a it? Shift. And it's a, it's, very, it's a shift, and it's also it's a very different time of your life totally um but you kind of have to i mean like you could not pay me to see my 20s again you couldn't, <laughs> you're like, good you're out on your 20s <laughs> and people are always like oh like i just want to be young like, oh, like, oh, can yeah. you just get me away <laughs> from that so how do you like your 30s so far good i've been in them for what where are we now like three four months uh -huh. and i think i turned that and i was like great i don't care about anything anymore <laughs> and so i'm just kind of like i can just do what, honestly i'm just kind of like you know, you're just kind of done with caring. I like it. Yeah. It's a good deal. How old are you? I'm 26. So I still oh, got a couple okay. minutes. Oh, I still got a couple little time I'm here. sorry. It's okay. You've got, yeah, okay. Welcome to 30 when you get there. Yes, you that's what time. I hear. Yes. Candice, thanks so much. Check Thank out her you book. So much. You won't be disappointed. For Candice, I'm DJ. See you next time here on The Sit Down.